So the title of today's lesson is the Sabbath, Sanctified and Holy. And we're going to look at what some of those terms mean, but it's the Sabbath, Sanctified and Holy. We're going to start this from the beginning, Genesis, the first chapter. Because a lot of people try to say that the Sabbath is for the Jews, not even knowing what the Jew is. Because the Jew is just one tribe of Israel, one son of Jacob. All the sons of Jacob are not Jews. They all Israelites, they all Hebrews, but they are, they are not all Jews. But pick it up at verse 1 and read. Genesis 1 and 1, go ahead. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was out form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. So now, when he, when he created the heavens and the earth, there was no man. The earth was, was without form. There was nobody on it, and it was empty. That's what void means. Go ahead. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So there was no man to help him create the heaven and the earth. There was no man to help him create light. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. Now keep that in mind. The evening and the morning were the first day. He said that evening first, right? Go ahead. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, mm -hmm. and it was so. That, that's, uh, that we learned something on our way to learning something. This firmament that he created, it divided the waters which are above it from the waters which are below it, right? So when you look up in the sky and you wonder why the sky blew, same reason why the water down here blew. Go ahead. And God called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning were the second day. So he created the heavens and earth. He, he, made, he, he made light and he put a firmament in the, in the midst of the waters and called it heaven. Skip down to uh, verse 26 and go ahead. Well, our verse, let's go ahead and read. Let's go ahead and read. Go ahead and read through. Verse 9, go ahead. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and mm -hmm. it was so. Go ahead. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called it he sees. Mm -hmm. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Mm-hmm. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So three days, we still don't see no man, right? Skip down to verse 26 go and read. Verse 26, go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So now he's bringing in man. Now he did all this creating. We're down to the sixth day now. He, he, he even created the animal. Man, man was created after the animal. Go ahead. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over, every, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So he said, let them have dominion. That means to rule over everything that moves upon the earth, and everything that creepeth on, on the earth, right? And those of us who've been here for a while, we know them angels was down here creeping upon the earth before man got here, right? But we're supposed to rule over them, too. We, we rule over everything that was here before we were. Even the animals, even the fallen angels was here before we were. We rule over them. Because if we don't, then they're ruling over us. Go ahead and read. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. He said refill the earth. That's a lesson for another time. But he said refill the earth. That means, that means it was something here before man. But that's good. Let's go into uh, Genesis, the uh, second chapter. Genesis chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 1. Well, nah, just go ahead and uh, Genesis 2 and 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made. Mm -hmm. And he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had made. Go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. He blessed it and he sanctified it. Go ahead. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So he sanctified the seventh day, which means he set this day apart from all the other days. He set, up, he set it apart from the first day when he created the heaven and earth. He set it apart from the, from the sixth day when he created man. 
He set the seventh day apart from all of that. Go ahead. Skip it down. Oh, yeah. Skip down to uh, verse, verse uh, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. So when he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, man became a living soul. What does that mean, if he became a living soul? That means that's all that he is, is a living soul. That's what he is. And without that breath of life, he's a dead soul. So the soul is not within you. The breath of life is in you. But you are the soul. You became a living soul. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That tree of knowledge of good and evil, if you, if you would see on that, on that Christmas lesson, you would know that it's this tree. Well, they didn't close the curtain now, but it's this, this tree that we wrote on, on the board here, which represents Satan. He is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that tree that was in the garden of Eden. Go ahead and read just go ahead and read. And a river went out of Eden to water the ground, and from thence was it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Delium and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. So now we got an idea of where the Garden of Eden was at, but you ain't going to never find it until the Lord returns. I just wanted to see if he's he been studying. Anyway, skip down to verse 16. Okay. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the, knowledge of, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Mm -hmm. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He said, In the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. And they, I didn't put it in the lesson, but in that day they surely die because... A day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years ain't nothing but a day to him, so no man has lived a thousand years. You finish that verse 17? Yep. Okay, let, we're going we're gonna, to uh, look up some things here, because it said he sanctified the, the, the seventh day, right? So we're going to look at what sanctified means. This is from the Compton uh, Interactive Encyclopedia under sanctify. Go ahead. Sanctify. To make holy. Specifically, to set apart as holy, consecrate, to make free from sin, purify. It's purified and it's supposed to be free from sin, right? So this day is supposed to be free from sin. Go ahead. To make binding or invaluable. To make binding or invaluable. That means, invaluable means that it's not to be violated. And it's binding. Go ahead. Because, because in, a, in, in being binded, and being bound, that means you are, you are accountable for something. You are, you are accountable to somebody else for something. It's made binding. Did you finish that? Yeah. So now he said it's invaluable. Let's, let's read what invaluable means. Invaluable. Not to be violated, not to be profaned or injured. Sacred. That cannot be violated. Indestructible. It's indestructible. So if the Sabbath day is indestructible, and it's not to be violated then, if it was the seventh day, when God set it for the seventh day, then what is it now? It's still the seventh day. It doesn't matter what any man came around and said, because when he made the Sabbath, the Sabbath day, there wasn't a man around, not breathing anyway. So how could a man come along and change it? How could a man come along and change something that's indestructible when man is destructible himself? Man can be destroyed. Man can be done away with. But he's going to try to come and change something that God set in order? How could that be possible? It can't be. Unless you're dealing with one of the false gods, one of the, one of the fake gods that's like this here, that you can go, or they erased it. I ain't tell y'all to erase it, man. But anyway, <laughs> they're always doing something I said, I didn't say do. But like, the, like that, that, that uh, gods you had in your living room on the 25th of December. That is, not all of us, I know about you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But that is, a, that is a destructible God. So those kind of gods, you can do whatever it is you want to do, right? Let's continue, though. Uh, we're going to look at what holy is. Because he, he, he made this day holy, too. Go ahead. Holy. Oh. This is under, still in the Compton. All this from the Compton uh, uh, Encyclopedia. Holy. Go ahead. Holy. Dedicated to religious use. Belonging to or coming from God. Consecrated. Sacred. So it's sacred. 
still, that still means it's set apart. It's consecrated. That still means it's set apart. That, mean, that means that it is apart from anything else. That it's clean. So this, this day is supposed to be kept clean. Your house is supposed to be clean. Your body is supposed to be clean. Your mind is supposed to be clean. What comes off your lips and your tongue is supposed to be clean. You finish it? No, we got one more. Go ahead. Spiritually perfect or pure. Perfect or pure? Perfect that means ain't nothing wrong with it, right? But they want to tell you that if you keep the Sabbath day, something wrong with you. But the Sabbath day is perfect and pure. So how is it that, that something is wrong with you keeping it? So how is something wrong with you being perfect and pure? They don't want you to be perfect and pure. You know why? Because they are the ministers of Satan. Now all the Satan's ministers, they are impure. Because Satan is impure. And they don't want you to be pure because they want to take you within. They on a journey. And that journey is to the lake of fire. Go ahead and finish. Untainted by evil or sin. Mm. Sinless and saintly. Sinless. We ain't going to read what sin is, but sin is a transgression of the law, a breaking, breaking of the commandments of God. And you can't do that on the Sabbath day. Let's go into Exodus, the 20th chapter. We'll start reading at verse 1. I wish I didn't have to have this sign on because it's blowing my paper around. But it's hot up here. Exodus 20 and 1. All right, go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Now, this is God talking here. This is not Emperor Constantine. <laughs> this is God. He said, I'm the Lord your God. Go ahead. Out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. He said, you can't have no other gods beside me. No other god. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. So you mean you can't wear no triple, no, no, no triple crown with the, with the fish on it? You can't walk around with no zodiac sign? You can't have no cross hanging around your neck with some dead man on it? He said you can't do it. This is God. And everything he say, everything he say is binding. Man can't change it. So you bow down and put them gifts under that tree, worshiping the tree? God forbid. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down to thyself to them, uh -oh. nor serve them. It's too late for some of y'all, because y'all have already bowed down to <laughs> Go for ahead and read. <laughs> for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children of the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, mm -hmm. and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So his mercy is reserved for those that love him and keep his commandments. That's who his mercy is reserved for. But we're not talking about the mercy that he showed you every day when he Cause you to get in the car accident and not die just so he can wake you up. Not that kind of mercy. Because he do that for the, he do that for the wicked. To try to, to try to get their attention, to try to wake them up. This mercy he's talking about here is for those that keep his commandments. And all those that keep his commandments, they're going to inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will hold him, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take up his name in vain. And I just want to give you a little understanding on that. Taking his name in vain ain't saying, oh my God, or or Jesus Christ, is saying that you are serving a God, that you are Christian, that you're holy, but then you go do something contrary to, to the commandments of God. You have taken his name in vain. You have, you have taken his name and used it for nothing. Go ahead and read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, this is in the commandments. This is actually the fourth commandment. Fourth. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, we didn't read what holy is, right? So you're supposed to, this day is supposed to be perfect and without sin, it's supposed to be pure. Go ahead. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy ma manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. So you can't have your kids go do your work for you. You can't hire nobody to do your work for you on the Sabbath day. You can't send your dog to go fetch the paper on the Sabbath day. You can't ride your horse for pleasure on the Sabbath day because the horse is working. That you can't do any work, and the word any covers everything. 
You can't do any work. Go ahead. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So he made the Sabbath day holy. Seven day he called it. He, he made it holy. He sanctified, he set it apart from all the other days. The only day he gave a name to, you got day one, two, three, four, five, and six, but the seventh day he called it the Sabbath day. The day, the day of the Lord's rest. He said he sanctified it and he made it holy. But continue to read, brother. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Mm. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Oh, yeah. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So whatever your neighbor got, you ain't supposed to be lusting after. If you, need, if you need something that he got, you better try to get your own. Find a way to get it without committing sin. Go ahead. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Mm -hmm. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. So look, we don't want to talk to God no more, because they all heard the voice of God. So it wasn't like Moses went up in the mountain and God only talked to Moses. They all heard the Lord speak these commandments. They all heard. He dealt with Moses personally after that, but when he gave them these commandments, everybody heard. It wasn't just Israel that heard, because when Israel came out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude of people. It wasn't just Israelites. It was probably with some Egyptians. It was probably some, some, some Ishmaelites. All kind of people was down there, because in Egypt, that was the, 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 the uh, metropolis of the world at the time. So all kind of people heard this word. So you can't come to me and say, what about the people that don't know, that don't know the truth? Everybody didn't hurt. Whether you accept it or not is up to you. We all, before we came here, we all had the choice to accept the truth or not. So those of us who, who chose to accept it, we ended up sitting in here. And some of us, later on, rejected it, and we gone. But anyway... That's good on that. Let's go into, uh, I, I really want to get y'all, I, I ain't going to put all that stuff in here. Let's go into Leviticus, the, uh, the uh, 23rd chapter. But I want to show you how the Lord, after this, he wrote, he wrote the commandments on stone, Moses broke them, and then he made, he, he, uh, made Moses carve out the stones, and then he wrote them again. Leviticus uh, 23 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. This still, is still the Lord talking, ain't it? The Lord is talking here. Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. These are holy gatherings, he said. These are my feasts. They're not the feast of the Jews. He said, but these are my feasts. Go ahead. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. He said, you shall do no work therein. Exodus said, you, sh you can't do any work. You shall do no work. He told you this before. He even told you about <coughs> these days that he laid out to, to bring you salvation, because that's what all this is about. This is the path of salvation right here. What verse was that? Uh, it's the end of verse 3. Go ahead and read. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Mm -hmm. These are my these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their season. So you're supposed to proclaim it, claim them in their season. So in their season means the time that it's supposed to happen. And the time that the Sabbath is supposed to happen is on what? The seventh day. That's the season for, for the weekly Sabbath is the seventh day. Not the, not the eighth day, like the Romans have you have you keep it. Not every whatever the floating Sabbath thing is, not that garbage, but the seventh day. Every seventh day is a season for the Sabbath. It's a holy gathering. Let's continue. Let's go into uh, Exodus 34. Exodus 34.
We're going to pick it up at verse 1, Exodus 34 and verse 1. 34 and 1. Okay, go ahead, brother. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two stones, hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. Because if you read the 30, in the 32nd chapter, when Moses came down from the mount, he saw that Israel had made that calf, and that they was committing all kind of debauchery. He broke the stones that the, that the Lord had wrote on. So the Lord said, look, I want this time you hew out the, the stones, and I'm going to write on those stones myself like I did the first time. But this time, you, since you broke them, this time you're going to hew them out the mouth. And that's a lot of work to do. But go ahead. And be ready in the morning and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present, present thyself there to me in, in the top of the mount. Skip down to 21. Go ahead. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In earing time and in harvest thou shalt rest. He said it don't matter what kind of work that, that needs to be done. On the seventh day, you are not going to do any work, but you're going you to keep it a day of rest to the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto him, or are we skipping down? Yeah, skip down to uh, 27. They can read the rest on their own. 27, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. He said, look, after the tenor of these words, some of the commandments, I have made a covenant. A covenant is something that's binding. Just like when he, when he made the Sabbath, it's binding. Covenant is binding. That's something that you can't get out of, especially once, once one of the people die. They, they ain't no, you can't make no amendment to it. So you can't make an amendment to the laws of God because, first of all, everybody he made a covenant with, they ain't here to get it to change. When Emperor Constantine was around, they was all gone. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was gone. And then the Lord came in the flesh, he shed his blood. So now all his blood been shed and people gone now. There, there is nobody that can change. It is what it is. It's, it's sealed in blood or you want to say etched in stone, but it's binding. Next verse, go ahead. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, these are the words of the covenant. If you want to if you want to be a servant of God, then you have to abide by the words of the covenant. And they are the Ten Commandments. Let's continue. Let's go into Matthew, the fourth chapter. Matthew chapter 4. We'll start reading at verse 1, Matthew 4 and 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. All right, go ahead. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. This, this is after he got baptized, but go ahead. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. Mm -hmm. And when a tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So now, just like we be tempted... By, by, the, by Satan. That's who the tempter is. The Lord himself had to be tempted by Satan. We in Matthew, the fourth chapter. The Lord himself had to be tempted by Satan. He had to go through all the things that we, that we go through. So, it, so he's not an alien to us. So Satan said, look, look, you, you've been in, a, in this mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, just like Moses was. He said, look, I know you're hungry and thirsty. He said, look, make these stones bread. But go ahead. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So now, this is Jesus talking. He said that you're supposed to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Not out of the mouth of Paul. Not out of the mouth of Peter. Neither out of the mouth of the Pope, but out of the mouth of God. Let's see where it is written at. Because when he says it's written, you can go find it. It's written. Deuteronomy 8 and 1. Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter in, in uh, verse 1. All right, go ahead. All the, 
all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee. This is why he led you the forty years in the wilderness to, to humble you and to prove you whether he's going to serve him or not. Go ahead. To know what was in thine heart, whether mm -hmm. thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Say, look, that's why he that's why he do it right now. To see if you're going to keep his commandments or not. When things are going to get real bad, how are you going to still keep the commandments? When you, when, when you ain't got nobody else. And, and everything is on the line, are you going to still keep the commandments? Go ahead. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that ye might make thee, known, make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded by the mouth of the Lord. This is why he's live. doing this, because he wants you to understand and know that there ain't nobody but him. You don't have nobody but him. You don't got your husband or your wife, your sister or your brother, your mama or your daddy, your son or your daughter. You ain't got nobody but God. He is the one. So that's why he's doing all this. So when you find yourself hungry and destitute, and homeless and all that, he want to see what you're going to do. Are you going to still serve me? And then he came and went through it himself so that you couldn't say you can't do it. Somebody told me, well, you know, he... He was God, so he didn't go through the same things we, we go through. I said, obviously, you wasn't reading. Obviously, you wasn't, because when he, when, look here, when, when, even before they put him on that cross, he said, Lord God, I don't want to do it. I do not want to die for this sinful people. But he said, your will, God, not mine. Yours, not mine. It wasn't his will to die for you, but it's the Father's will. See, I can't understand how people are always ragging on the Father. He was, he was that old hard guy of the Old Testament. He the one sent his son to die for you. His son that didn't want to do it, but he did it. What, what verse we at? Uh, verse 4. Go ahead. They, thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Say, look, he supposed to consider this. Just like a man chastises his son, Correct this child, Lord do the same thing you because he is a father. So don't expect that everything gonna be, you know, cotton candy and and, and uh, uh, bubbles and all that stuff. No, no, because when you out of order, he gonna correct you and he gonna teach you. Is that it? Uh, we got verse six. Go ahead. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. So you're supposed to keep his commandments and fear him. Did he say love him? Everybody told me they love God. They love Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So how much do you love Jesus if you don't keep his commandments? You don't. According, according to Jesus, you don't. You don't love him or the Father, and they don't love you. Let's go into uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we're going to start reading at verse 9. Ecclesiastes 12 and 9. All right, go ahead. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught, taught the people knowledge. This is what the preacher is supposed to do, is teach the people knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. He ain't supposed to come up with some story, but he's supposed to teach the people knowledge. Not his own knowledge, but the knowledge of God. Go ahead. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Mm-hmm. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. He said that which was written was upright, even words of truth. And, that, and the Lord told you when he was here in the flesh, he said, look, it is written. Man shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Not by money, not by bread, 
not by the fancy car, not by the, the big house, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God does man live. Because if you don't live by the words of God, you're not going to live. You'll exist for a while, but you're not going to live. But go ahead and read, brother. These words of the wise are as gold and as nails fashioned by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. He said of making many books, there is no end. Let me, let me give you this understanding that there's all kind of books. But there's one book that you better attain to. Because it comes from one shepherd. Go ahead. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So your whole duty as being a human being is what? To fear God and keep his commandments. Because if you don't fear God, you can love him all you want to, but if you don't fear him, you are not going to keep his commandments. If my children didn't fear me, they are run all over me. It's just like when I came of age, my father thought that I wanted to buck up. I said, man, I ain't stupid. Why would I do that? I like living. Go ahead and sing. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. He said he's going to bring every work into judgment and every secret thing. So that means that when you're not around the congregation and you're committing sin, it don't matter because we ain't going to come and try to find out what you're doing. I know I'm not. I'm trying to work out my own salvation. But look, the Lord God is going to bring every secret thing into judgment. All your works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. And only good works are those that are in the boundaries of the commandments. Everything outside of that, it ain't good. It's evil. Go ahead. That was it. That was it. Let's move on. Let's go into uh, 1 Corinthians 10th chapter because we just want to, I just want to make, make it plain who this God is we're dealing with. First Corinthians 10 chapter, we're going to start reading in verse 1. Ten and one, go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. Now, this is what the preacher supposed to do. He, ain't supposed to let, he, he is not supposed to let people be ignorant, right? So Paul said, hey, I don't want you to be ignorant. Go ahead. How that all of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Mm-hmm. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Go ahead. And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. That rock was the Messiah. That's who followed them. That's who it was that brought them out of Egypt. That's who it was that brought ten plagues upon Egypt to bring Israel out. That's who it was who split the Red Sea. It was the Messiah. And Jesus is the Messiah. So it was Jesus the whole time that you was dealing with. You ain't never dealt with the Father. Jesus told you that, that you ain't never seen, the, you ain't never heard his voice, nor seen his shape. So if you ain't never heard his voice, nor seen his shape, then, and it was the Messiah that brought you out of Egypt and that spoke to you the commandments, then it was Jesus the whole time. Go ahead. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, mm -hmm. for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the extent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Because they lusted after evil things. Like I said, Moses went up in that mountain to get these commandments from God. And by the, by the time he was getting ready to come down, because he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights, they had made them a golden calf and said, these be the gods that brought you out of Egypt. Even though they knew it was a true and living God. He had split the sea for them. He had drowned all the Egyptians. But then they're going to make a calf. This is how evil this people is. And we always talk about, why is it happening to us? Why everybody hate us? Look at what you've been doing. Hmm. Examine yourself. Don't try to examine nobody else. Examine yourself. Go ahead and read. Neither be ye idolaters as some of them, w as some of them were. Mm -hmm. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Go ahead. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed 
and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Twenty three thousand people died because they, they started to worship false gods. That was a spiritual fornication. But they were, they were doing some physical fornication too. And 23,000 people died for breaking the commandments of God. It's going to be a lot more than that when the Lord returns. A lot more. Is that verse 9? That was verse 8. Go ahead. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. And he sent, he sent snakes in there to bite them. And that's how you got that symbol of the snake around the pole. Because the Lord told Moses, look here. Get you a brazen serpent and put it around the pole, put it around the staff and hold it up. And whoever, whoever got enough faith to look up on that, on that serpent, they'll be healed. That's, why, that's where you get, get that symbol from. And if, you, and if you didn't have that faith that you was going to be healed if you looked upon the serpent, then you was going to die. And so he went in the midst of the, of the congregation and, and let them know, you better, you better look at this serpent. But anyway, that's good. But see, if you, if you go back and read uh, uh, Exodus, the 32nd chapter, you'll see all the stuff that they was doing and what Moses ended up doing he, he, and how he broke those two tables of stone and he had to do it again in the 34th chapter. But anyway, it was Jesus the whole time. Let's go into uh, St. John, the 14th chapter. St. John, chapter 14. Pick it up at verse 13. 14 to 13. Go ahead and read. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Mm -hmm. But this is a stipulation to that. But they'll read this to you and, and tell you that it don't matter what you do, that the Lord's going to give you what you want. No, this is a stipulation. Go ahead. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Mm hmm if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love, that's the stipulation. You got to keep his commandments. You can read the rest of it on your own, but go, go ahead and read, brother. Let's read the rest of it. Read, read, yeah, read, uh, just read. And I, will pray to, and I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So now, if you keep his commandments, he'll pray to, he'll pray to the Father for you. And he'll, and he'll send a comforter to be with you forever, which is his word. Let's skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Oh, so you got to keep his commandments in order to love him? So what about all them people that love Jesus but don't keep his commandments? What about all them? He said the one that keeps my commandments is, is the one that loves me. Continue to read. And he that loveth me shall be loved of the Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Oh, so you can't know God unless you start to keep his commandments. Then he'll manifest himself to you. But you've got to keep his commandments first. There are stipulations. You can't come to God as you are. If you read the 24th chapter of Exodus, he, he told Moses, tell them people to uh, clean themselves up before they come and meet me. Three days they got to cleanse themselves. Then they come meet me. You can't come to God as you are. And if you don't keep his commandments, you don't know him. This is the words of Jesus right here. They're not mine. This is not one of the apostles or one of the prophets. This is Jesus himself. He said, then, if you keep my commandments, you the one that loved me. He said, then, then I will love you. Because if you don't keep his commandments, he don't love you. He didn't even want to die for you. He said, then, if you love me, my father will love you. So then the father don't even love you if you don't keep the commandments. We got to understand what we're reading right here. All that Sunday doctrine, that ain't going to take you nowhere but to the lake of fire. Because you're not going to clean yourself up. You're not going to purify yourself. You're not going to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You won't be bound by it. Then you won't teach your children to keep the Sabbath either. And then here comes this generation that we're living in now, where there ain't no love for nobody. People don't have no love for their baby. They don't have no love for their parents. They don't have no love for their siblings. 
they don't have no love for the, for the man of God that's trying to teach them the truth. Believe it or not, if you're a servant of God and you're going to preach the gospel, your life is on the line. Your life is in danger. But we ain't got no choice but to do it. What we at, brother? Uh, that, was just, that was it. 21. That was 21? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go into Jeremiah. But there's some severity behind these things. Let's go into Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Because you're thinking, well, you know, I, I, had, I haven't been keeping the Sabbath. Ain't nothing happened to me. Really? <laughs> Have you been paying attention? Because, you know, our people are so used to pain, suffering, that we think that that's what's supposed to happen to us. That's why he said we are stiff-necked people. It's just like spraying raid match. The roaches don't care. They just keep coming back. <laughs> Good grief, this is going to be on, on DVD. It's going to be on the internet too, ain't it? I got to start watching what I say. Uh, Jeremiah 17 and verse 19. Jeremiah 17 and 19. Go ahead and read. Thus said the Lord unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by which they go out, mm -hmm. and in all thy, the gates of Jerusalem. And say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that enter in by these gates. And thus saith the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, mm -hmm. nor bring it in by thy gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth the burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. He said, look, keep this day holy as I commanded your fathers. He said, don't bring nothing out of your house to sell, to do no business with. Don't bear no burden on the Sabbath, trying to go make you some money on the Sabbath day. He said, look, don't do no work on this day. None, because buying and selling, that's work. He said, you can't do it. Go ahead. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their necks stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. So the fathers didn't keep the commandments. They, they didn't hollow the Sabbath day. So he brought all kinds of evil upon them. So then they found themselves in captivity. But he's giving them a chance right here. He's saying, look, just keep my Sabbath day. But we'll read it. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass, if ye diligi diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of the city on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on, and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. He said this city shall remain. So we didn't have to be here. We didn't have to be over here on, on this continent if they had just kept the Sabbath day. We wouldn't have had to go through all that horror and that holocaust that's called the uh, uh, transatlantic slave trade. We wouldn't have had to go through that. We wouldn't have had to go through, the, through all that slavery in, in Africa and all that slavery in the lands of the, of the Ishmaelites, which is still going on. Because if you think slavery is, is done away with, they still buy and sell slaves in Arab countries and in African countries. And they are your people. You sitting back thinking that you are African, and they just waiting for you to come back over there so they can sell you. Because <laughs> they the one who sold you to these people. History going to tell you that they came over there and took you. That was way later when they said, man, them slaves cost you too much money. We're going to have to go over there and steal them. They used to steal them. They used to rob them. They used to rape them. So they, they, they expert at it. They said, we can go get them without paying for them. But before that, they had to go over there and buy you. And if you go over there now, they still going to sell you. Where we at? Verse 26. Read. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, and from the places about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, and meat offerings and incense, and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. See, the, the house of the Lord would have still been there, and you would have still been there. Go ahead. But if you will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden, even entering in the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, 
and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. He's talking about a spiritual fire. He's talking about his anger. He said, I'm going to kill, kill the fire, and he said, and it won't be quenched. And it's still not quenched because you're protesting, and you're sitting there, and you're still getting shot down in the street because his anger is not quenched because you still won't keep his Sabbath. I bet you're still at the mall on the Sabbath day, the same mall that's going to persecute you for protesting. They're going to prosecute you, and then you go right back to the mall and, and do business. How stupid can that be? These people are trying to get you locked up, but you're in there spending your money. But that's Israel. Stiff-necked people. Let's go into Exodus, Ezekiel, I should say. Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. Ezekiel chapter 20. Pick it up at verse 8. Ezekiel 20 and verse 8. All right, go ahead. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did, n- they did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. So now look, he said, he tell them, he said, look, I pleaded with your fathers. They would not honor me. I'm pleading with you. Now you don't want to honor me. Go ahead. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were in the sight. I made th- myself known unto them and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. But he made himself known to them. Only to Israel did he make himself known. Go ahead. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Say if a man keep his statutes and judgments, he's going to live. But he's talking about an eternal life. We, we want to think everything is physical, everything is flesh and blood. He's talking about eternal. Go ahead. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. He said, look, I gave them my Sabbaths that they might know that I'm the Lord that set, that set them apart from everybody else. This is a sign between me and them. That means this is, this is the, 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 the signature on the dotted line. When you're keeping the Sabbath, that let everybody know who you are. Go ahead. But the house of Israel b- rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments. Which if a man do, he shall even live in them. So they despised the words of truth. They despised this, these, these words of eternal life. They didn't want to live. Go ahead. And my Sabbath they greatly polluted. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen in whose sight I brought them out. Go ahead. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them into, in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Said they polluted my Sabbaths. They even worshipped their worship they idols on my Sabbath. They polluted them. It was, it, they didn't keep it pure anymore. Go ahead. <coughs> Nevertheless, m- mine eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, walk ye, walk ye not in the statues of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. He said, neither defile yourselves with their idols. So now he, he didn't get rid of all the parents from, from, from 20 years old and up. He got rid of them, except for Joshua and Caleb. And he told the children, now y'all walk in my commandments and keep my Sabbath. 